this is COVID Life, the Mental Health Edition. Hello, friend. This is Edward. And today we'll be discussing the effects of COVID on sleep, sleep deprivation, insomnia, and ways for us to get better. Hello, welcome to our podcast. This is uh, once again COVID Life, the mental health edition. Your hosts for this show are myself, Edward, and my wife, Ingrid. So what I want to talk about today is how COVID can lead to a loss of sleep. And that's really important because sleep is really the key to mental health. Sleep is so important that the lack of it, even one hour less every day, will build up in your system and eventually you'll have what's called sleep deficiency in your system. And that will lead to a host of issues. So what kind of issues? Well, let's think about it. When's the last time you had a bad sleep? Think about that. And with these COVID times, it might have been too far away. Okay, so let's say you had a bad night's sleep and you woke up. What's the first thing you'll notice? You'll wake up. It's hard to get up in the morning. So there's one, a lack of energy. You feel grumpy. So two, irritability. You're irritable. What is irritability? It means you're more anxious. You're, you can't cope. You're not as patient as before. Three, you'll find even your body, your decoordination is is poor. You might drop things, you'll spill things. So your coordination is terrible. Energy levels are low. Concentration is impaired. Your attention span is not the best. You go to school. At school, you have trouble concentrating to whatever the teacher is, or you fall asleep, right? Fall asleep at school, fall asleep while driving, or if you go to work. At work, your efficiency is terrible. You don't work like you normally do. And that grumpiness stays with you all day. Like you can try drinking the coffee, sure. Have a cup of coffee, two cups of coffee, and it'll wake you up for half an hour. But then the coffee itself gives you more irritability, more anxiety, which adds to the anxiety created by the lack of sleep. It compounds it. The more grumpy you get. Then you go home and you fight with the kids, fight with the wife, fight with the in-laws. It's just a bad day. And this was just one bad night's sleep. Okay. COVID gives us stress. Either you get stressed out because you get sick or a loved one gets sick or the fear of getting sick or the economical and financial consequences of being sick or the financial consequences of what the government does to prevent the disease itself, the lockdowns, the restrictions that end up costing you work hours, which in turn means financial and economical stress. So that makes you worry, and you worry, and you worry. You spend the whole day worrying, worrying about the economy, worrying about how you're going to put food on the table. And yes, that is very stressful. And a lot of us are feeling that right now because of COVID. So what does it do? Instead of going to bed on time, you end up doing something because your mind is so preoccupied with worries and stress that you can't fall asleep. Your mind is just full of ideas and worries, and it didn't help all the coffee you drank earlier in the day because you didn't sleep well the night before. So now you're elevated adrenaline levels due to the caffeine and the stress. And so you don't fall asleep till two, three in the morning. And if you do fall asleep, it's a terrible sleep. You don't get to the good sleep levels, what we call REM sleep or even deeper sleep areas. Good sleep is restorative sleep. It's sleep that helps you restore yourself, makes your body healthy. That's why when people take sleeping pills and they go to sleep on sleeping pills, they don't get the restorative sleep. So the next day they wake up, they're all grumpy and miserable. It's almost as though they didn't sleep. They've done studies before and they, where they have had people go without sleep for many days. And what happened to these people? One, they were grumpy as ever, irritable as ever, and they felt terrible. 
even physically, they felt terrible. Like they had aches and pains in their body, sweating, anxious, clammy, pale looking. Like it really paid a physical toll on them. And not only that, it paid a psychological and emotional toll on them. They felt anxious. They felt more depressed. And as the sleep loss continued, some of them even entered what's called a psychotic phase. The lack of sleep basically broke a certain barrier in our brain. What I like to call it the awake dream barrier. Now, imagine you break this little barrier. All of a sudden, the stuff that's on the dream side of your brain starts entering into the awake side of your brain. And all of a sudden, you start seeing hallucinations, shadows on the sides of your vision, paintings that start moving, the teddy bear on the shelf whose eyes start blinking and mouth starts moving. Patterns on the floor that start swirling. It's almost uh, like you had some kind of dry. Very scary, very scary. These people sometimes need to get admitted into hospital, put on special medications that force them to sleep. These are medications that aren't straight sleeping pills. These are medications that act at the source of the problem. Medications that get to the bottom of the problem along with psychotherapy and counseling to get at the source of the problem. Well, friend, I hope that you're not at that stage because at that stage... We need to call someone and get help, like your doctor or primary care provider or a crisis line or go to the hospital. But hopefully we're not there. We're not there. We're just at the point where we're having a bad sleep. We're being irritable, irritated. You're snappy with your husband. You're snappy with your wife. You're snappy with your kids. You're snappy at work. You're snappy with everybody. You're just a terrible, irritable person. Why? Let's think about it. You're not getting your sleep. And I said that one hour lack of sleep, it adds up. It adds up. How much? How many hours do we need? They say seven to eight hours is what's recommended, but everybody's different. And the really the only way to tell is to keep a journal, just like the journal we talked about in our first episode. But in this journal, you could include a rating system of one to ten for anxiety. But I think what we're going to call this is we're going to call this the sleep journal. And we're going to be able to do two things with this sleep journal. Document how many hours you sleep and your quality of sleep. So did you fall asleep easily? Did you wake up easily? How many times did you wake up at night? And when you did wake up, did you fall asleep easily? So describe in this journal every day in the morning when you wake up, how many hours you slept and your quality of sleep. Then look at that journal again at bedtime. Write down the time you entered the bed so you can keep track of the number of hours that you're sleeping as well as the time that you go to sleep. And give yourself a rating similar to the anxiety rating, 1 to 10, but mix it with your mood as well. So how was my mood? How was my irritability? How grumpy was I from 1 to 10? And then you hopefully are down to 2 or 3. But if you're 8 or 9, it probably means you're not getting enough sleep. Look at the number of hours that you're sleeping. If it's within seven to eight and you're, you're happy with your sleep, maybe it's something else. And then we'll deal with that in a different podcast. But let's say you're getting five hours of sleep and now you're seeing the toll is taking. You're seeing the numbers. So we know now that you need to sleep better. So we're going to look at what kind of things we can do to get you to sleep better. As you sleep better, you keep track of that in this journal, what's called your sleep journal. And if you want, you can even add dreams into the sleep journal. And then later on, we'll talk about writing down dreams and dream analysis. That's a really interesting type of therapy, along with hypnosis as another type of therapy that we can use for for stress reduction. So there's some some nice areas that we can talk about in the future, but we're going to stick to sleep for today. So that there is basically the assessment of the situation. Now we have how many hours you slept. You slept poorly. It's having a big effect on your sleep. We see it. You documented it, okay? So now it's time for strategies. What do we do to improve our sleep? One, avoid all caffeine. Yes, I know. You want to have that first cup of coffee in the day. Okay, let's compromise. Have half caffeinated, half decaf. Yes, in the morning. And then the rest of the day, have some fruit juice, some fruit, some maybe a V8, something that gives you some energy, some vitamins, and avoid coffee after lunchtime because it will have an effect on you. 
It will cause problems later on. Number two, get into a really good routine for sleep. Pick a time that you want to go to sleep. Let's say it's 10 or 11. For an hour before sleep, start winding down. You need to wind down. You can't just expect at 11 o'clock, I'm watching some scary movie on TV or some action movie on TV and then turn off the lights and go to bed. Forget it. Your mind will not work like that. You have to wind it down. Very important. So turn off that TV. Turn off whatever is making your body more excited. Wind down. Take a hot bath. Put on some comfortable clothes. And then you can try different things like herbal teas. Chamomile, mint, valerian, those are nice teas you can try. You can ask, uh, you can go to the local pharmacy or herb store and ask for what kind of teas they have that are natural that will help you sleep. Have a nice cup of that after your warm bath and then settle down to bed. If you want, you can try reading a book. That's fine. That won't that won't be too bad. It might actually help you fall asleep. Even An audio book might be even better. That way you can turn off the lights, turn on the audio book. And listen to the words of the audiobook. What we can try to do one day is to make a podcast that's just about relaxation therapy. And that relaxation therapy, we can do some visualizations where we see things in our mind. And then we'll get Ingrid to actually do that because she's really into meditation and mindfulness therapy. So she'll be really good at uh, doing that uh, meditation relaxation therapy podcast. We'll, we'll, we'll do that at a later time. So that's something that interests you. Send us, send us a message. We'll soon have a Twitter page where people can, can do that. But in the meantime, if you just do a hashtag COVID life, uh, COVID life, no space after the COVID hashtag, and just put it on Twitter. As soon as we have our own Twitter, put it on this podcast. Well, hopefully as the podcast gets more advanced we'll start having a podcast website plus a podcast email oh this is another way another way is just uh i remember uh if you go to buy me a coffee slash covid life okay buy me a coffee slash covid life there you'll find us uh that there is a little page there where you're allowed to send messages to us and go ahead send us a message through that which we'll we'll get that through our email so here we are. So now we, we created a routine for sleep where we, we're settling down, we're relaxing, but still we're not able to fall asleep. And why is that? Because we're thinking about too many things. We're thinking about COVID. We're thinking about COVID, the illness. We're thinking about job losses. We're thinking about how am I going to pay this month's rent, this month's mortgage? If I'm a business person, how am I going to pay my workers? my rent fee, my utilities, my license fees, all that. All that, especially because COVID has affected restaurants and small businesses. So they're really, really getting hit hard. And it's not abnormal for you guys to be thinking and worrying so much. So it's not like we're going to be able to get rid of all your worries. Okay, go get that journal and start writing down those worries, okay? Because if you can't sleep, what good is it losing all that sleep and you keep thinking about the same things? So put it in that journal. Pick up that journal where you're going to put the bedtime and you do your sleep hours and your anxiety scores and mood scores. And put there in big, my worries for today. And list them right now. One, how am I going to pay the mortgage? Two, when is pandemic going to end? Three, should I be taking this vaccine? Four, I want to take the vaccine, but will there be a supply and will I be too late to get it? All your worries, whatever the worries are, I want you to list them. Once you've done all the listing, go through the list and check them off one by one. One by one, one by one. Okay, you get to the bottom of the list. Look at the list one last time and say, okay, well, you know what? It's listed there. There's nothing possible that I can do at 11 o'clock at night to deal with any of those things that I just checked off. It's impossible. So why don't I give myself a break? I deserve a break. You deserve a break. Your body and mind deserves a break. Tell your journal, 
and I'm telling literally in your mind, talk to your journal and say, look, here are my worries. I'm going to leave that for you and then close the book. Close the book with the worries. Let the book have the worries. Don't forget, you're not going to forget your worries. You know, if you want next time in the morning when you wake up, you can always open the book and look at the worries. They're not going to go anywhere. They'll still be there. But at least you give yourself a break. And that might be enough for you to stop thinking about them. Then turn on the audiobook, turn on the nice music. And if that doesn't work, you can even try white noise. On YouTube, you can find these one or two hour episodes of, yes, pure white noise. White noise. White noise has a remarkable ability to calm your brain and make the waves, your mental, your brain creates waves, patterns, and the brain patterns, as they change, you become more sleepy. So you went and had a relaxing time, took a bath, are in a comfortable clothing, took your herbal tea or a warm glass of milk, have turned off the lights. And you know what? Those watches that have the, uh, the numbers nice and bright, put something over it. Nothing worse than waking up every hour and looking at the time. If you need to be awake somewhere, put an alarm on it, and then just turn it around or cover it. It's like watching the water boil. You keep watching and watching, and it just is terrible. You need to not worry about time. That's just another worry. I can't sleep. I'm not sleeping. It's another worry. So it's a vicious cycle. I sleep less. I worry more. And we have to break that cycle. It's the only way you're going to get better. Okay, so you did the routine. Dress comfortably hot bath or shower, comfy PJs, something nice and relaxing to listen to, turn off the lights, hop into bed, close your eyes, and then just let yourself relax. Try not to think about the worries. Remember, that's in the book. They're not going to go anywhere. You're not going to forget something. A lot of people, we worry because we want to deal with it. We want to have answers right away. With COVID, the answers are not going to come right away. Because nobody knows nothing about really about COVID. COVID is such a new illness, such a new disease that we're still learning about. So let the scientists worry about COVID. Let the doctors worry about COVID. You worry about getting a good sleep because that's going to make a big difference to your life, to your health, and to your mental health and mental wellness. So I hope that that gives you at least some ideas on how to improve your sleep. And we'll come back next time with another topic. We'll see what we'll do based on uh, on what we can come up with. But if you have any suggestions, please, please do tell us. Okay, send us a message. Once we find a really good way, to, once we start getting messages, I'll put it on my podcast to see what is the best way to send you a message. Now, one thing we might be able to do, I think maybe we can create a podcast YouTube, yes. Let me think about doing that somehow. What I can do is put the uh, podcast on a YouTube channel, and then you can leave messages there. That might be one way. But if you want to leave it more personally, we'll figure out some kind of email. I will see if I can do that before our next podcast or the one after that. Anyways, I want you all to have a, a wonderful evening. And most of all, get some rest, get some sleep. Drink plenty of water. Make sure you're eating well. Talk to your neighbors. Talk to your friends through the phone, through Zoom. And we look forward to uh, having you listen to our next podcast. And hopefully Ingrid will be able to participate in that one. I really think she'll give you, she has so much information to share. She's uh, such a talented and and, um, has a lot of experience in psychotherapy and counseling and in mental illness. So she, her words of wisdom and words of knowledge from all her practice years will really help uh, everyone. And if anybody thinks they have something to share and would like to get interviewed, please pass us a message and we will definitely uh, hook you up in one of our podcasts. So thank you once again for listening and we hope to uh, see you and hear from you in our next podcast. Take care. Bye-bye.
And that brings us to the end of this podcast. This was COVID Life, the mental health edition. And we hope you come back and join us again soon for another podcast. We will try to get these out every two to three days. Okay, have a great week and we'll talk to you soon. You know what I'm going to say? I've been feeling this way for far too long.